Hello everyone and welcome back to the Hammered Corner. In today's video, I have brought back the Coin Collector Chronicles and for the 800 people who have joined the channel since I last posted an episode 7 months ago is a video where I talk to coin collectors all over the world about their coins and their experiences whilst collecting. Today's video we have Samuel Flieger who is a Dane collecting English and ancient world coins. And if you yourself would like to appear on the channel in this series then follow the link in the video description. I'd like to talk to coin collectors of all experiences from beginner to veteran collectors as every story is unique and I'd love to share it with the rest of the coin collecting community. So without further ado, please enjoy today's video. Uh, my name is uh, Samuel Flieger. I'm a yeah, collector of uh, all kinds of coins, uh, both English and ancient and Danish. And I'm also a metal detectorist, so I'm all over the place. And I'm a student right now, so yeah, 18 so years old. <laughs> so how and when did you get into collecting English coins if you're from Denmark? Um, it was actually after I went, uh, for the first time uh, I, I went, uh, I, I've only ever been to Sweden, Denmark and recently to South America. But when I was 12 years old, my mom took me to London and that was a really great experience for me. And, and we saw the Tower of London and uh, I, I, I thought it was so cool with the, all the uh, English history and the, the monarchs. And, uh, and I discovered that they struck coins there as well for hundreds of years. So I also I was already into coins uh, at that time. So I thought I I, I gotta get the get a coin from uh, the top in the Tower of London. <laughs> what coin? What coin were you into? And what did you get? What coin did you get from the tower? Uh, I actually uh, at at the at the Tower of London. I actually just bought uh, you know those souvenir coins. Oh yeah. <laughs> but it was it was actually years later that I finally managed to get a Tower of London uh, mint coin, and it was. Um, uh, and Elizabeth the first uh, shilling uh, that I got for like six pounds or something so uh, that, oh wow yeah <laughs> on, uh, on Facebook so it, it was very worn but even like it was a big my biggest uh, hammered silver I, I thought it was really cool so before English coins you said you were into coins what coins were you into uh, all kinds of old coins like uh, mainly pre-1800 or um, but mainly, mainly old Danish coins from uh, the 1600s, and also uh, a bit of ancient coins. I had a few ancient coins, but uh, I, that's actually what I mainly collect now. Um, but yeah, all, I, I, I hadn't really focused my collection that much yet uh, at that time. But uh, yeah, all kinds of old coins with, with good history. I love the history. So. And here in England, I know metal detectorists find hammer coins all the time. What's metal detecting in Denmark like? Do you do you get to find coins quite often? Oh yeah, we find uh, a lot of hammered coins. Uh, sadly, in Denmark, we have a we had a, a civil war, so the hammered coins we find, uh, or the, the medieval hammered coins, they they are mainly bronze because of the war conflicts. But they're still very cool, and we get uh, like three hundred fifty, no, thirty five pounds per coin, even though they really corroded. So it, it, oh wow yeah you you get some good money from the the museum as well so it's it's a great system here in Denmark. Do you, is it uh, do you find any English coins or any Saxon coins or Viking coins anything like that? I haven't found any, but uh, I know lots of my friends have uh, found lots of Saxon coins, uh, especially from the Danegeld. Uh, that's yeah that's mainly why uh, the coins have come here, uh, but also in the twelfth and thirteen hundreds we find. Uh, uh, sterling coinage, uh, long crosses, and uh, yeah, it with the first uh, pennies, uh, because our our own coins were so bad that we we needed to get better coins imported. So we we find uh, quite a few of those as well. So who would you say is your favorite monarch? Uh, Knut the Great, probably. Uh, yeah, because the great Viking king uh, conquered uh, most of, if not all, of uh, England, and uh, yeah, really, really great guy. Uh, like probably one of the biggest uh, Danish uh, and and maybe maybe English monarchs. I don't know, um, but in my opinion, uh, yeah, he's my favorite. Do you have any coins from his reign? Yeah, I got a cut uh, half a, a penny from the, the London mints uh, that I got pretty cheap. But I, I want to get a nice example. So, so is the Saxon era your favorite? Is that your sort of era of English medieval coins? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, that that's that's probably my favorites, and also uh, I I love to kind of love, find the Tudors interesting as well. Elizabeth the first and the, uh, Henry the the eighth. Uh, yeah, 
and and also Charles the first, and after that it it kind of ends there with my my uh, interests, um, but yeah. And uh, living in Denmark, do you have many museums with coin hoards and things like that of of, of the Viking period? Oh yeah, we every every kind of major museum in Denmark uh, definitely have one or two uh, or more coin hoards and mainly uh, Viking coinage. Uh, Whereas actually most of the coins I think are, are, are Saxon, uh, which is pretty cool. So yeah, we we have a lot lot of those uh, in the museums. And what English hammered coin has been in your collection the longest? It's two. I bought uh, off a metal detector years ago, uh, like a lot of uh, unclean coins or something like that. And there, it, it was mainly like late Roman stuff. But there was two small thin. Uh, copper coins and I later discovered that there was Charles the first um, farthings uh, which I thought was really cool uh, civil war issues a really small tiny uh, thin bronze uh, or copper coins with, uh, I think they're actually brass something like that but they, 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 I thought those were pretty cool I had those for probably seven years or something like that when you purchased them, did you know a lot about Charles I or did you sort of buy them and then learn more about the history? I didn't even know what coins were in that lot, uh, to be fair. He, he, he just had a bag, he, he, he took a handful and put it in a, yeah, a smaller bag to me. Um, but yeah, I, I later learned uh, when I received them that it was that, that was what it was. And then I learned a bit of this uh, English Civil War and found it really interesting uh, to have such a piece. Uh, yeah. Oh, fantastic. And do you remember your first coin? So you said earlier that your first English hammered coin was Elizabeth I from the Tower Mint. What was your first ever coin that sort of got you hooked into the hobby? Oh, yeah, that's a great question. Uh, I actually, when I, I, like I started collecting when I was seven years old and just got a giant collection. But then I, uh, there was like a local antique shop who sold that sold like one kilos uh, boxes of coins for, I think, 10 pounds. And uh, I bought a lot of those and then start picking them out. And I remember finding, uh, like, uh, I found a few uh, ancient and medieval coins in, in that lot. And I started learning the history of that and I was totally hooked. I think the first was, like, an Islamic uh, coin from the 600s uh, AD with an elephant on, uh, which I thought was very cool uh, to have something that old and just in a kilo bag. Um, so yeah, that's that's probably been my collection for ten years or something like that. Do you still have it? Yeah, I still have it. <laughs> oh, fantastic! Uh, so, what has been your favorite memory since you've been coin collecting? What's been your favorite memory? Oh, it's it's probably definitely uh, Christmas. Uh, I, I I used to collect like in in Denmark we had a lot of uh, commemorative issues that started from. 1888, 1888, and we still make them today, but if the monarch uh, had uh, turned uh, 50 or something like that. Uh, there was a coin from a king in the 1800s that I, I didn't have, and I really wanted that coin. And uh, I was like 11 years old or something, and I told my mom. And, and then I got it for Christmas, and I was so happy because she, and she also told her story that it, it took her days and days to find the coin in different shops and uh, everything, so... I, I, that that was probably my, my favorite uh, moment. Yeah, that my mom. Yeah. We we definitely get some great memories here in the hobby, don't we? Yeah, yeah definitely. I, I I heard you say about commemorative. So in in Denmark, uh, I know in the UK we have like special fifty p's that really get uh, collectors uh, engaged in the young age and into the hobby. Uh, do they have sort of different issues in Denmark? Do they have like sort of commemorative stuff? Yeah, 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 we definitely, we have uh, the 10 kroners and the 20 kroners, mainly the 20 kroners, which are like coins worth um, two and a half pounds, about about that. Uh, uh, There's that, a lot of commemoratives of those, uh, I think o o way over 100 now, uh, every time, uh, like something, yeah, mainly like the if the monarchs uh, has a jubilee or something, uh, they issue a new new coin or... They also do theme coins with some with ships or some with the uh, polar bears or something like that. Uh, scientists, uh, Danish scientists. So they, they, those are very probably the most collected coins in Denmark because everyone gets them in their change and then they start collecting the series. So there's 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 lots in Denmark to get people into the hobby as well. 
So what's the rarest coin you've ever had? What's the rarest coin you've ever had? Coins. I got a few in unique coins actually, or unpublished coins. Uh, uh, one, one, a couple being uh, ancients, and I also have a, a mule of uh, from the Tower Mint, a penny. From uh, it, the obverse is attributed to Edward the First. Oh no, Edward the Second, I think. And the reverse is attributed to uh, Edward the First. So it's uh, I got got it confirmed that it was a mule. Uh, so it, it it's maybe unique or maybe it's there's like five hundred of them, but it, it's unpublished. It's a mule, so. And did you buy it knowing it was a mule, or was it sort of a random purchase that you then studied afterwards? Oh no, I I just wanted my first at what the uh, the first or second penny, so I went to eBay, bought it for twenty pounds, and yeah, late later uh, someone uh, gave me a very specific ID on it. And for those who may be watching out there who are from Denmark, um, how easy is it for you to buy English coins and get them imported? Is there anything that anybody needs to sort of be aware of? There is there any import duties or taxes or anything like that? Yeah, that's a real and really annoying because of Brexit. Uh, we have to pay a lot of uh, yeah import duties, uh, a lot of customs. Uh, so it's it. Like what we what we do here uh, is like if we get someone to like ship an an expensive coin uh, tracked uh, from uh, the UK, we say to them like uh, okay, uh, put the value on the yeah uh, declare the value as like uh, two pounds or something like that. <laughs> so we only have to pay the handling fees, which are like still like twenty pounds, but oh wow, we don't have to pay like uh, two hundred in customs or something like that. It's quite expensive here in Denmark sometimes. So is it is the hand, hand and fee a 20 pound every single time or is it like a percentage of something? That's every single time that it's kind oh, of wow. crazy. Yeah. I once had to pay a, I think 11 pounds because one, someone forgot to add a, uh, like 10p uh, postage stamp uh, on, on the letter. Oh no. That was, that was, yeah, stupid, very stupid. But that's the way it is here. <laughs> So I know for a lot of people, uh, the the concept of buying an expensive coin right at this beginning might be very daunting. I know it was for me. So, you know, the jump from a £30 coin to a £200 coin to an £800 coin, it gets very, it gets easier every time. But at the very beginning, you know, you get that sort of pit in your stomach. So what's the most expensive coin you've ever purchased? Oh, that that's actually recent, recently. I paid, uh, ooh, what was it? Uh like 2100 pounds oh wow yeah for an uh, an ancient gold coin um one of the earliest uh, ever struck and a big one and uh, 16 grams uh, that I've, i all, always wanted so that's that's probably my most expensive coin ever and oh wow has it has it arrived have you got it with you not yet not yet but not yet. Uh, hopefully for either my birthday or christmas <laughs> Well, there'll be a there'll be a foot of it on screen somewhere, so everyone will we'll, we'll be able to see it by then, which is fantastic, awesome. So, how did you have to save for a long time? Did you have to sell some? Do you sell coins to sort of purchase new ones? Yeah, I was lucky to buy some uh, two two extremely rare mystery crowns. They're called uh, the old Danish uh, Kronos. Uh, um, that that in, they first came by came uh, to be by uh, because uh, the Danish king wanted a. Uh, a coin like the crowns of James the first, so he, he imitated it with weight and everything, uh, so that's why we have Krona in all of Scandinavia now. It's because we, we the Danish king wanted something like that, and uh, those were really rare. The two two I had because they were uh, mystery crowns because they were made by Swedes uh, after the yeah during some of the wars we had, uh, and they're both of lower weights and uh, uh, lower. Um, um, they had lower silver content in them, so that those are really rare. So uh, they they tried to uh, destroy the Danish coin system or something like that. But yeah, uh, I sold a couple of those and got some good money. <laughs> Fantastic. So so what before you purchased uh, the coin for two thousand one hundred? Uh, what was the coin before that? What what's the jump in between price wise? What what was the second most expensive, and was it a big jump? That was the mystery crown, uh, one of them. That I think only eight are, eight are known in the world, or something like that. That was uh, I think fifteen hundred pounds, uh, and that was also fairly recently this year. And before that, I think it's probably a coin worth six hundred pounds. 
either an ancient or an old Danish coin. Fantastic. And finally, Sam, uh, what advice would you give to newbies who are looking to start off on this lifetime hobby? What would you give? Uh, yeah, collect. Uh, if yeah, in, if if there's any period in history that you like, or yeah, any subject that you really find interesting, especially it's mainly history. Uh, focus on that, and then yeah, buy the yeah, the highest grade uh, that you can afford, uh, and you probably hear that a bunch of times but it really pays out in the beginning because a lot of the coins i had when i started off i they're not really in that high high condition so they don't really fit my collection now but you want to start out with something that you can keep up keep on uh, for years and years and um, so yeah the best quality you can afford and pick a specific area so don't don't go extreme maybe go go very broad in the beginning to like see what you like and find interesting because when you buy a coin you learn uh, backwards from the history. So you may maybe buy a coin, you don't know what it is, but when you study the coin, you learn the history and then it opens a totally new field. So yeah, yeah. Pick, pick out something you like and it will maybe, you'll end up somewhere totally else. Fantastic, that's some perfect advice, Sam. So for all those collectors as well, I have been collecting almost two years now and I'm still buying and branching into different coins and just learning about it and just trying to find something I enjoy and I just love everything so it's really hard to sort of narrow it down and that's okay uh, which is fantastic so thank you so much Sam for your advice and for talking to us today uh, it's been really really interesting to hear your side and hear um, how, a, how a collector from Denmark has got into English coinage and ancients and it's been yeah it's fantastic to talk to you so thanks for so much for coming on today no problem it was fun being here <laughs> perfect cheers Sam thanks. <laughs> so there we have it a big thanks to Sam for appearing on the channel and for sharing his experiences and wisdom with us all. If you'd like to watch more, then please follow the link on screen to the playlist for seven other episodes. And if you'd like to be a part of it and share your experiences, then please follow the link in the video description. Thank you all for watching and as always, keep collecting!